Kim! 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 Look, it's not working. 90 minutes, one piece falls out. This is six passes. It's not working. It's not working. It's not working. <laughs> Stop volunteering for stuff. Stop volunteering. Do it, Billy, make it. If you think you be created, do it, Billy, make it. With Kim and Garrett, make it. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to make money? So do we. But we don't this week. We're not making any money this week. It's all volunteer work. Thanks to Mother Teresa. <laughs> Our daughter is a senior in high school. She's in the band and we volunteered to do the band prop this year. It's her last year. So if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be us. We actually own a craft studio. So of course we're going to volunteer to do the band prop. I think these band props are beyond craft studio stuff though. <laughs> these things are huge. Last year's was huge. Yeah, I was going to say last year you volunteered to do the bird cage and you pulled off like a 12 foot tall bird cage. 13 foot that held students, one to two students, and moved across the field. So this year we're asked to make some stages, just some square boxes. How hard can it be? So we started with some sketches from the band leader, shared with us some specs of what he's thinking for the show this year. Big dreams, big dreams. <laughs> so give us a little drawing here of, of what what's on this paper, because it's a little hard to see here in the grid paper. So share with them what we interpreted from this paper. He wants a four foot tall stage that's four foot by four foot with stairs coming down on all sides. Now we've talked them down to two sides. <laughs> so it's a four foot tall stage with stairs on both sides. Then he wanted a two foot by two foot by two foot stage with stairs going up to it. Another two foot by two foot by two foot stage with stairs going up to it. A three by five by one foot tall stage Little with platform. ramps on either side so they could walk over like a rainbow kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's a big dreams, big dreams. But, and so we started with this and, and it seems it seems relatively doable. Not too bad. We're already concerned with four feet. That seems a little bit high. I don't but think the, he knows what four feet is. Well, he may, but the football field is big. And so when you get a prop the size out there, suddenly if you're way up high in the stands, four foot doesn't look so big. It doesn't look like four foot. And this, the other requirement that came a little bit after, it's in the text on here. So I thought this wasn't bad. We'll just get some two by fours, some mm -hmm. plywood, mm -hmm. throw these together. They're not bad at all. <laughs> and then we got another requirement. It needs to be portable. Of course it needs to be portable. They're taking it with them. It needs to break down and fit inside the same little trailer that all of the band equipment does. So quickly we started brainstorming some ideas on how we might make this portable. And I had a brain blast. I was like, we'll just use like the display type of setup that we use for the door corners. And then some of the mechanisms that I built for the rotating display, we'll just use that type of stuff, but we'll do it at a half inch. Boom, they can assemble it on the field. Garrett created a list of supplies that we were going to need for this project. After we did our whole design, we knew we needed 17 sheets of half inch ply. We were going to use some brackets, some screws, and the band mom went out to the local hardware store and they donated all of the supplies needed for this project, which is super generous and awesome. The band didn't have to pay for any of the supplies. But, <laughs> however, we said half inch plywood. So that hardware store gave us the cheapest half inch plywood they have. Of course they would. Of course they it, would. It was so warpy. It was full of glue pockets. There's, there's like center pieces missing. This was horrible. When we unbanded it, that stuff tried to taco immediately. Yeah, definitely taco. It definitely looked like a half pipe, like right away, which gave me an idea. And so we, Tanner and I took a little side trip and we built the new ramp <laughs> and then back over here to the band prop. And the funny thing is after you pulled the first sheet off, yes, it tacoed. Then you pulled another sheet off and then two sheets below it. I watched it. it. I watched it taco. Yes, yes. It was like, oh. Every sheet. So we knew right then this was going to be an issue. We were going to have to add some weights to the laser and see what we could do. Hopefully we were going to, we let it sit on the ground for two days. Yeah, two days. And we tried to cut it down to the size of the pieces that we needed. So it would be even less warpy. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. put a four inch lens inside the laser to try to set it even further off of the materials so we wouldn't have to keep adjusting it. And we started making our cuts. 
And what did we find? Even the Eon 100 watt laser would not cut through this half inch plywood. We knew it was gonna be a challenge with the warpingness, but we didn't know it was gonna burn and char so bad. Uh, this is six passes. This is six passes and I still didn't get through in most of the places. It, it was just a mess and every time we tried to pop it out, it splintered. You could see it was charring, causing fire on the back. I it tried to cut this piece out with the jigsaw to get it. Yeah, he had to use the saw for one of them. It was a mess. The front of this thing is a, is a mess as well. Well, look at the giant freaking pockets in this thing. Look at the giant pockets. The knots, the glue. This, I, this is why I hate volunteering. Right about the time I was ready to give up and call it and tell them that they're going to have to find somebody else to build it. Well, we had already tried the jigsaw and it was splintering, splintering. and it was super slow and there were a lot of pieces that needed There's to be so cut. Many pieces. And it was just not really going to be a viable option. Kim had an idea. She's like, just flip it over. Can't cut we cut side. it from the back side? Yeah, cut the front side, yeah. flip it over and cut the back side. I'm like, how am I ever going to line that up? And she's just like, use the print and cut feature. <laughs> I was like, that is genius. <laughs> so what we ended up doing is we would add registration marks to our first cut and we run the registration marks two or three times mm -hmm. until it would get through enough that we'd be able to see it on the back side. Yes, we just needed to see where the crosshairs met on the back side of that board. It didn't have to cut all the way through. I just needed to see it cut through enough that I could use it as a registration mark. Then we would flip the board, go back to Lightbird, we would flip the design, and then line up those same registration marks using the print and cut and run it on the back side. And that way we were doing one pass in the front and one pass in the back. It took way less time than the six passes just going through the front. That is just, that was just a huge time saver and, and actually project saver. Project saver. I uh, mean, We weren't sure how we were gonna, give them what they wanted in the design that we had created using the laser cut pieces so that it was easy assemble, easy apart, no tools, super light, if we weren't able to actually cut them on the laser. So once we were able to cut one pass on top, one pass on bottom. It was a breeze. Everything else went perfect because we lost it like two days right up front trying to unwarp the wood and get through it in a couple of passes. We lost a lot of time and we were down to the wire. We had to spend the entire weekend just constantly changing out boards because we knew all 17 sheets needed to be cut. We basically, well, I guess we had wasted a couple sheets. We wasted a couple sheets. So at least 15 sheets of plywood. I gave us, I gave us two sheets for buffer <laughs> and those two sheets were gone day one and two trying to get through. So. There was no more time for mistakes unless it was going to come out of my pocket. It was all 15 sheets, half a sheet at a time, and two, two cuts for each one of them. And so it was basically running all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And we thought we would finish up first thing Monday, but we didn't. We didn't. It was all day Monday. We left Monday late night. And, and we said, well, I have two more cuts. I'll do them in the morning. We'll finish Tuesday morning. No problem. We'll finish Tuesday morning. Well, they called to no. pick it up and uh, I was still running the last cut, the front side. And they said, we're on our way. And I was like, okay. It finished up about the same time they pulled up. They got it fresh off the laser. I didn't even get to assemble that last piece to see if it fit. We had the big ones assembled, but that last little bit, we, we didn't even, we just, we knew it would work. We were confident. It's not a real Kim and Garrett project unless the deadline and the delivery time are the exact same. That's, that's kind of how it was. We did attend the first practice with the band prop and after we saw the band director on the four foot stage and um, a couple of the other kids marching across, we decided it was definitely gonna need some additional support. Well, as soon as I saw the one kid on the four foot stage, give it a little jump. I was like, oh. I better add a couple of more supports. I wasn't expecting them to jump around on it. And last year's band mom warned us, this thing gets beat up. So we knew for some of the tab supports, as we did the little tab inserts, that they were going to need some sort of a support. Well, even us setting yeah. it up, we broke the first yeah, one. Yeah, broke the first tab. So. so we had to cut a little bit. I, in the, yeah. I went back in and I added some metal 
L brackets that laid flat against it, and I was going to use those to reinforce the tabs. They're like hurricane ties, and they were great tab supports so that those tabs wouldn't break. That was uh, pretty smart to add those on there. And then the kids got to spray paint it, decorate it, and it looked great for the first game. We got to see them try it. Uh, Our daughter... If you're looking at the band stage, she's on those stairs. She's one of the saxophone players. They got to dance. She had her own little like solo part. And it was great to see them use it and see it used as planned. As right? planned. Yeah. And uh, you were right. It once, I mean, it looked huge inside the warehouse here. But once it got on the field, I was like, oh, those do look tiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you spend all this time and it filled up like the warehouse yeah. area where we had everything. I couldn't up. wait to get rid of it because we had no room. I it couldn't is. move in there side the warehouse. But out there on the field, suddenly she shrank real quick. Yes. Yeah. But it assembled great. It travels well. The kids are able to assemble it in just a couple of minutes. Well, and we I- found out ultimately they don't take it apart all the way like we designed garrett designed it so it breaks down completely flat it's a small pile ultimately i don't think they take the two foot stages apart they take the four foot stage apart all the big stuff and they're not taking the stairs apart they leave those assembled too but that's okay half of it is disassembled half of it is assembled it makes easy setup for them and it's still light and easy to carry it is and it was definitely easier than trying to figure out how to make a bird cage <laughs> uh, so i don't know this uh, i don't know that i could have come up with the bird cage design i'm not sure i could have come up with what you've fashioned for these stages and to make them so horrible came out great i'm happy with it and i'm really glad that i learned how to deal with that stubborn half inch ply hopefully if you've gotten nothing else out of this video you learned that if you need to cut some thick plywood you can use registration marks flip that over and cut from the back side i got so many plans now for ramps for out back where i can use those registration marks to try to get through three quarter inch <laughs> so and he was excited once we got done and delivered this. Yeah. Now he said, I've got so many ideas uh, of different craft show um, state Display things yeah, that I can yeah, make because yeah. of how I had to come up with ways to keep the band props together and break them down. I was like, oh, I can use these for little standards. I could use these for the little platforms. I have so many ideas of how to use those things that I've learned from making the band prop for making more display things. Well, I'm about out of time. I gotta go watch our kid play in the band. (laughs) You gotta go figure out how you could cut some half inch plywood. And a big thanks to the Make It Mafia. We love you guys. That is the best way to support this channel. I mean, I can't say enough about that crew right there. They are great that I can't wait to go on another cruise and meet all my friends.